What a horrible night to have a parody. It's NES Works Guide in episode 60. It's Halloween time, or at least it is if you're a cool person watching the early access version of this video on my Patreon, and you know what that means. It's time for a Castlevania video, or at least a Castlevania adjacent video. Konami YY World is only about 15% Castlevania by mass, and it's not especially good Castlevania. But by request of patron Joseph Wozniak, and the sheer marvel of a Castlevania type game that failed to come to the US, YY World demands coverage. Two years ago, I tackled a more direct 8 bit Castlevania parody in Kid Dracula for Famicom. And honestly, if you're looking for a great game that makes Castlevania kind of funny, you might be better off just going back and watching that episode again. But I suppose that's why YY World matters. Konami made their missteps here, figured out a lot of what you should and should not do while making a self referential game, and refined their process over the course of a few years. Without YY World, would Kid Dracula have been nearly so good? Would Parodius, for that matter? Released for Famicom and only Famicom in January of 1988, Konami YY World pulls together a bunch of Konami action heroes from the Famicom into a single platform adventure that doesn't quite qualify as a Metroidvania, but also doesn't quite not. That sums up the game in a nutshell, really. It's a little weird all around. For starters, Konami seems to have drawn the selection of worlds and heroes featured here from a randomized lottery. You have some Famicom mainstays like Simon Belmont and Goemon, sure, but YY World also includes licensed characters like Mikey from The Goonies 2 and King Kong. Of course, Konami had made games about both of those guys within fairly recent memory at the time of YY World's release, but the licensing challenges around the Mikey sprite alone guarantee that this game will never ever see an official release in the US, unless Konami inexplicably decides to backport the compromised mobile version to NES, which replaced Mikey and King Kong with Upa and Pintaro. So I suppose that we're fortunate that unofficial Famicom localizations exist, albeit imperfectly. Now, why Konami went with licensed heroes instead of relying on in-house creations, like Solid Snake, or the mustachioed porn star looking dudes from Track and Field, or the nameless soldiers from Russian Attack is beyond me, but here we are. The closest we'll ever see to the Goonies 3. And hey, the primary characters can use a cape to fly, which is kind of like a jetpack. So I guess we have it here, jetpack Goonies. Of course, in order to make that happen, you need to find both Mikey and the protagonist Cape, which is no simple task. YY World takes place across six lands in the kingdom of Konami, and the hero of each land has been locked away by the bad guys. Rather than simply beginning the game as, say, Simon Belmont, you first need to rescue Simon Belmont from the land of Castlevania. And in order to make that happen, you need to acquire a key to the coffin where he's been imprisoned by defeating a boss, then slip past Count Dracula, a nearly indestructible gigantic fiend who teleports around through the air and launches spreads of fireballs at you. The same holds true for all of the captive protagonists here. Each one has been locked behind bars and must be rescued with the use of a key hidden in their home territory. Once you rescue a hero, you also need to find their hidden weapon somewhere in their realm as well. In addition to Simon, Goemon, King Kong, and Mikey, you also need to rescue the hero of Getsufumaden, Vic Viper, Twin Bee, and Moai Kun. You may note that fully half of these characters never actually showed up in NES releases, which means you don't need to wonder why YY World never reached America or Europe. Each protagonist has their own special traits and capabilities. Simon Belmont, for example, moves and attacks a bit sluggishly, but his whip has incredible range and reduces the amount of damage you're likely to take versus that of other characters, who generally have to get in close for direct melee strikes. On the other hand, Mikey can slip into small spaces, though he's physically very weak. Goemon can chuck money to hurt bad guys and open the shimmering treasure boxes you encounter along the way, and so on. But if all of Konami's heroes are trapped behind bars and you can only play as them once you rescue them, how does this whole thing work in the first place? Enter Konami's mascot character, Konami Man. American fans will most likely know Konami Man through the Goonies too, since he appears in multiple rooms throughout the Fratelli's Labyrinth and even introduces himself by name. In fact, Konami Man had been appearing in various games since back in 1984 with Road Fighter, usually popping in as a power-up. 
Here, Konami Man gets his own vehicle to start him, a game in which he plays the role of hero and even gets a bit of backstory as the android creation of Dr. Cinnamon from Twinbee. The good doctor appears here as the central figure who summons Konami Man into action to save the company's action heroes, while his brother Dr. Spice provides you with passwords and revives fallen characters. More on that later. Konami Man unfortunately turns out not to be that amazing a hero. By default he can walk and punch and jump, but not much more than that. His attack has comically short range, so you really need to get up into a bad guy's face to land a blow. He can eventually acquire a cape that allows him to fly, and a laser beam that allows him to fire a ranged attack. But in order to acquire those abilities for him, you need to survive a brutal front-loaded gauntlet of enemy brutality. Yes, this is one of those games that shoves its highest difficulty level toward the beginning, kind of like a dungeon crawler RPG. The simple task of surviving to rescue a single hero is absolutely fraught with peril and frustration. Konami Man can endure a few attacks from bad guys, but somehow you need to hold out long enough to defeat huge mobile bosses that are almost impossible to hit repeatedly without suffering collateral damage. The game becomes considerably less difficult once you've added a hero or two to your roster. That being said, YY World doesn't expect Konami Man to go it alone, even from the start. You begin the game with a companion character to assist, Konami Lady, who plays exactly like Konami Man, but looks like Nei from Phantasy Star 2, or I guess vice versa since the original Phantasy Star had just debuted a month before YY World. By pressing up plus A, you can swap instantly between Konami Man and Konami Lady, each of whom possess their own life meters. That is, if you choose to play solo. You can also team up for two-person cooperative play, with one player taking Konami Man and the other controlling Konami Lady. It's here we start to see the fairly ambitious nature of YY World. It's a free-roaming, action-platformer featuring multiple interchangeable characters and cooperative play. Pretty impressive stuff for early 1988. It feels like a synthesis of multiple contemporary Konami games into one, and not just because of all the heroes and worlds you get to play with. The self-containing free-roaming levels harken back to Getsufumaden and Vampire Killer, as do the alternate weapons fueled by expendable power-ups, in this case bullets rather than hearts. The need to collect keys and rescue characters from prison screams The Goonies 2. The cooperative two-player action calls to mind Russian Attack and Contra. And the roster of heroes with distinct styles and independent life meters looks ahead to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which would ship about a year and a half later. There's a lot of really good stuff here, and that's not even getting into the generally excellent graphics and the enhanced versions of familiar Konami tunes that accompany each protagonist. Konami YY World may be a bit of a self-congratulatory joke game, but Konami went and built it on a foundation of really solid gameplay principles. All of these details really make me wish that I liked it more. Unfortunately, as much as YY World takes some brilliant steps forward for an early 1988 game, it's still an early 1988 game, and that means it does a lot of unfriendly things too. I mentioned the hilariously short range of Konami Man and Konami Lady's attacks, which makes the early going for YY World incredibly rough. The game does have an element of persistence at least, which means that if you manage to find a jail key in a given world, but both of your mascot protagonists cark it before you can unlock the imprisoned hero, you have to start the level again from the beginning. But you get to keep the key, meaning you can make a beeline directly to the hero on your next go around. However, that persistence starts to work against you once you've rescued a few Konami characters. See, the missile icons you collect don't simply function as fuel for your sub-weapons. They also double as currency. And, in the well-established by this point Dragon Quest style, falling in combat means that you lose half of your currency once you restart. But hey, no big deal, right? You can just farm some more ammo for your sub-weapons, obviously. Except that it is a big deal, because only Konami Man and Konami Lady can freely resurrect when they die. If any of the other characters run out of life as you roam around the worlds, Dr. Spice charges you 100 bullets or missiles or whatever to revive them. Once you have half a dozen protagonists running around with you, they become as much a liability as an asset. Every time you let one of them die, you have to return to Dr. Spice and shell out a lot of company scrip in order to bring them back into action. And if your mains die and get sent back to the beginning, you lose half of whatever scrip you've managed to scrape together. Now, there are some ways of mitigating this. Goemon's stage in particular features several gambling parlors where you can wager bullets in order to boost your stock. But overall, it means that YY World goes from being this overwhelmingly difficult adventure to being a frustrating experience in managing the health of multiple characters and grinding for cash when you need to revive someone. It also means that you probably won't use your sub-weapons as much as you'd prefer. 
Not because you'll run out of tokens to power the weapons, but because you don't want to dip too heavily into your cash reserve. In short, it's one of those games that takes some pretty great creative strides, combining the best elements of several other excellent games, and then squandering them on a couple of hostile design choices. Still, I would say that YY World has enough going for it that it merits a look, if only to enjoy the amusing sight of Simon Belmont traipsing through Gradius World, or Mikey from the Goonies fighting Count Dracula. I mean, sure, pop culture mashups are a creatively exhausted concept these days, but 35 years ago, we nerds hadn't derailed pop culture quite yet. So you can appreciate the novelty of a game like this. Especially since most of the other parody games available at the time revolved around goofy looking versions of Gundams or Godzilla, rather than actual video game protagonists. And, you know, King Kong, I guess. Next time on NES Works Guide In, some kind of, you know, side story.